We are here at Sun and Fun 2023. Last year at Sun and Fun 2022, I talked to these folks here in this booth about an engine that's right behind us and which is depicted on that sign you see down on your lower left. This is a new engine for very light aircraft and it's a four stroke engine and that's something that you guys have been very, very interested in for a long time. This is Ken Bourne, I'm Dan Johnson and we're gonna talk about this. Tell me a little bit about from last year to this year, what has happened? And then we'll go into some detail about the nitty gritty of the engine. Kevin. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things we were still working with last year was different prop combinations, to see what we were gonna get the best performance with. So we, we do dynamic thrust tests to get those numbers. And what we ended up with was this four blade E-prop. Very unusual looking. Yeah, you've got it kind of positioned. It's positioned well like that sort of, and it's kind of like, are you sure that's on tight? Because it doesn't look right. I know, and I even get asked the question, are they counter-rotating? <laughs> well, that's a valid question, though, looking at it. Yeah, yeah, but it, no, no, they're not. But uh, so 9,200 RPM, we're getting about 250 pounds of thrust out of it, wow. which is a, not a bad number for considering what this plane weighs. Right. Um, some of the other little nuances we were working out is just checking different kinds of fuel to see if anything was going to be better or worse. It runs pretty much with anything you put in it that's 93 or is better. Is that right? 100 low lead's not a problem. Uh, you know, so better. you could fuel it in an airport then? You can fuel it at not an airport. Not that these aircraft are used at airports too often, but no. if you're there and you need some juice. Well, as, as with what we were dealing with with the two-stroke engines, the, the lead fouling on the plugs was a concern. The way the ignition systems on this these particular engines are designed, that's not an issue. It, it starts to detect the resistance buildup and it burns it off. <laughs> so it's just kind of a smart little engine then. We, from the time the engine is is put on the plane, first started till it needs to be rebuilt at 500 hours, we do not have to replace the spark plug. Wow. wow. Okay, so that's kind of a mouthful of stuff there, but the one thing I've queued in on is 500 hours. Now, some people are gonna go, well, I thought four strokes could go 2,000 hours. How would you respond to that? Some four strokes can go 2,000 hours. This engine's turning almost 10,000 RPM. There's one of the big differences, So right? You wanna check that thing. At 500 hours, <laughs> we have some stuff we need to look at. The, the overhaul on these is not a real critical, as far as replacing crankshafts and things like that, we're, we're not really doing all that. So what's the cost at 500 hours to do that thing you just mentioned? I haven't had to overhaul any of them yet, so. Well, yeah, give me a guess what you're expecting then. A ballpark estimate would be, I, I, honestly, I don't know. I don't want to give a, a low yeah, or a high no, I, number. I don't mean to put you on the hot spot there, but, but my point is it'll be a lot less than, let's say, a 912 overhaul. Oh, absolutely. Which is several $10,000 or more. Absolutely. This would be a fraction of that somewhere. A fraction, Okay, yes. that's safe. We don't need to pin you down to a number. But the point is, so you got to do it more often, but it's much less expensive. And when you think about it, well, look at your engine a little more often. How bad could that be if it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg? Well, and, you know, as far as the expense part is concerned, we're only burning around a gallon an hour. <laughs> I mean, is that right? A gallon? Now like, that's yeah. a cruise, of course, not max. Not, not climb, full power, yeah, a cruise. But I mean, with the price of fuel going to what it is right now, that, that's a pretty good incentive to run one of these little. Gosh, things, yes, I know? guess so. I mean, we're we're changing the oil every 20 hours. It doesn't have a filter; it's just got an oil screen. Oh, like really? How, like how some of the continental. That's good do. enough, huh? And that's plenty good enough. Yeah. Wow, so it's amazing stuff. Okay, now let's get into a little nitty gritty about, okay, here we got a single seat 103 uh, qualified aircraft. Mm -hmm. You've got a four stroke engine on it, which is something a lot of people have asked about for gosh, years. Mm -hmm. there's, there's been some other choices, but they came and they went and they weren't that satisfactory, I guess. And they were too heavy. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so talk to me about some actual numbers about the engine then. So with our, with our mounting package on the airframe, that that prop combination with our battery box, the wiring horn, the whole thing, right at 80 pounds. 80 pounds. Everything I'm looking at there. Yep. In that frame of reference. Yep. Okay. Wow. Okay. So 80 pounds. Uh, how much power is it putting out again? Right at 40 horsepower. 40 horsepower. And you know, a lot of folks remember 40 horsepower on a legal 103 is a ton of power. Yes, it is. So now, last year you were doing all this work we talked about earlier. Since then, you've been flying it. Yes, we have. Tell me about that. So our our 80 foot clearance is at 400 feet. You mean you're at 80 feet? We can clear an 80 foot object at 400 feet. At a 400 feet. feet of ground runway. At 400 feet of runway. <laughs> That's pretty spectacular. What do you get off the ground at? Yeah. So, now, say calm winds. 
the best reference I can give you to this is that any active pilot would know, the size of the numbers on a standard runway, it takes about two thirds of those numbers for me to get off the Not ground. Not all of them. No. <laughs> And we can and we can land in about the same distance. We're going to be talking here 20, 25 feet or something like that. Then I it's mean, to, to, just to break it, down. It's course. literally from about here to the middle of the road right there, <laughs> which I know we can't see in the frame of reference here. But it's not it's, very far. It's yeah, a little it, out of my arm reach is all. Right. It's it's not far. Gosh, that's amazing. Then okay, now I came across this engine it says Arrow on it, and I came across a Swiss company that had the same exact look. Mm -hmm. Is this engine emanating from Switzerland or something? It is. So oh. a lot of people think well of Swiss watches, for example. Why not Swiss engines? I the, guess. the machining on these is just phenomenal. Is it? It is just phenomenal. So this company, Helvenko, is the name Helvenko of the company. Helvenko is the name that, of the company. That produces Very the Swiss sounding name. Absolutely. They they come from the junior indie car world. Oh. And a lot of the, the engineers at this company race these engines on their carts. So they're using them constantly. Wow. So if there's any little issues or any fine tuning that needs to be done, they are well on top of it. And these guys stand behind their product in a way that makes me very comfortable wow. doing business with them. So this is kind of a groundbreaking opportunity then for all those people who said, I wish I could have a four-stroke on my 103 Ultralight. Absolutely. You got an answer for them. What Absolutely. kind of money would it take? Let's say I own this airplane right here mm -hmm. and my engine either went south or I don't know, whatever. I needed to replace it or I just wanted to. What would what would my upgrade cost be? So right approximately. And these right things now, change, folks. Please don't hold us to this price. I'm asking him for one, but you gotta understand you need to contact him. The, now the, go ahead. The cost in text, that, that is just insane how rapidly that changes. Uh, so right now we're able to offer this engine package right around sixty six not six ninety seven hundred dollars. Ninety seven hundred dollars, okay. Yeah. The, the engine itself is a little pricey, but yeah, that includes this mount hardware and stuff I see. Everything right? you need to attach everything. it to the plane. Because I you probably can't see it too well in the, in the camera, I'll get some closer views of it, but that machine also looks really nice to me. Nice quality looking stuff. Yeah, it's all it's all made on our, our CNC pipe benders. Everything is it's very, very precise. Uh, but that, that includes the fuel system, battery box, the small little instrument panel, that everything you need to attach the engine to your Quicksilver is wow. included in that cost. Wow. Okay, so let's compare for people. If they went out and found, I don't know, some other engine uh, uh, if you could buy a new 503 today, my guess is it would be $6,000. You can't, so we're just guessing here, but at least $6,000, and that'd just be an engine. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have to add all this other stuff. So you'd be in the same, my guess is, a similar ballpark you, to a, a getting, 503 if they were making it today. You're getting close. I mean, with the, with the flex drive shaft, with everything that goes inside the root tube, the additional shaft in the root tube, the pulleys, Everything that goes along with that, yeah, yeah. you're getting you're getting close. And so, so it's roughly, you know, this is a very rough comparison, but roughly the same as going out and buying some new four-stroke, uh, some new two-stroke, and adding all the elements it took to put it on the airplane. And and the weight of the 503 along with the flex drive system with the belt drive, it's about the same as what this is. Is that right? Is. Okay, so yeah. it's similar to a 503 in many ways, mm -hmm. but it brings four-stroke to the technology. Yep. Very cool. Tell us how we get in touch with you, Ken, so that people can acquire further, learn even more details than I've given them here. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, pretty much there seven days a week. Uh, <laughs> you know, phone number is 985-536-3994. You can either ask for me, Ken Bourne, or uh, my father, Eugene Beaverborn. Uh, the website is air-techinc.com. And uh, we'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions, any inquiries that people have. You know, we, we get right on it. The engines are readily available. We can get them anytime we want. So the supply chain issues that we deal with a lot of this other stuff, we're not having to deal with that. Hopefully we won't ever have to deal with that with these guys. Uh, it's a it's a pretty strong, pretty strong company. They're gonna be around for a long excellent, time. So excellent. it's a good thing. And I'll give a credit to AirTech, which has been around a long time. You have a you have more experience than anybody in the world, I believe, with this particular airframe and now joining this engine technology to it. You guys are the experts. I mean, if going, it's Quicksilver, it's you. We're going on 44 years. <laughs> you don't look old enough for that. He was a little kid when I first met him running around well, here with his father, so. <laughs> he's going on doing this 44 years. I'm closer to the 1920 year mark, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's not that old, believe me. Thank you so much, Ken, that was great. And I do want to give a little nod to your dad here because he just was a Hall of Fame winner at EAA just 
uh, it was for 2022, I believe, was yep. the year. So congratulations to yep. Uh, yep. everybody knows him as Beaver. You probably do too, folks. Uh, congratulations to your dad and keep, yeah. keep up the great work, Ken. You do some great stuff. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks for Dan. telling us about the new Aero engine. Absolutely. You get more on bydanjohnson.com. If you can't find that, I don't know where you're looking, but come on and look some more because we got lots of fuss, lots of stuff for you there on affordable aviation. Here's a great new entry. Thanks for joining us today.